You might recognize this as my 1971 Super Beetle. This is the inside of my Super Beetle. This is me wearing flip-flops and socks. When my bug was fresh off the assembly line, it had a rubber pad over the entire dash. It was put there for some US safety laws, don't get in a wreck and bonk your head on metal, get in a wreck and bonk your head on rubber instead. A lot of people take off that rubber pad because below it is the steel dash, which is the way the bugs in the 50s and 60s were. When you take that pad off though, you have a problem. Your original air vents, well, they don't fit anymore because they're made to go on a piece of rubber. One solution is to track down some air vents from 50s and 60s bugs because they do fit. Those vents can be hard to find. Original ones are impossible to find. Reproduction ones, eh, they're kind of cheap and crummy. So I kind of have a different solution. This is my 3D printer, and yeah, we're just gonna print our own vents. It's not as hard as it sounds. When I first started designing my CAD files, I used this piece of software. It's from Autodesk, it's free, and it's called Tinkercad. And honestly, I think it's designed for children, because essentially all you do is play around with the shapes. You make shapes, you can make them hollow for reliefs and make different parts, and really it's like using building blocks. This was pretty helpful and taught me a lot of the essentials of how CAD works. When I got a little bit better, I upgraded to another piece of free software. This one is called SelfCAD, and the only real difference is that I could make a lot more complex parts and complex shapes. Once you design the piece that you're going to print out, you have to put it into something called a slicer. This is the slicer. I use Cura, which is one of the more common slicers out there, and surprise, surprise, it's free. The slicer does exactly what it sounds like. It takes my 3D model, in this case, one of the vents that we're going to be printing out, and it slices it layer by layer into the individual layers that my 3D printer is going to print. I have some different settings. I can make things thicker. That's what she said. I can change how it adheres to the printing surface. I can change temperatures. I can change speeds. Different things that you print with require different settings, and this is where I fine-tune those. So I've used my slicer to slice down my vent, and over the course of six hours and nine minutes, according to the slicer, it always takes a little bit longer, I'm going to print out, hopefully, a Volkswagen dash vent. Just like that, we have our part. Actually, it's not that easy. Let me introduce you to my box of misfit prints. These are a lot of the designs that, well, honestly, they failed. Typically what I do is once I design something up, I'll print it in a cheap, low-resolution plastic and then see if it works. If it works, I'll move on and print it in the final product. 
This final product is actually a wood filament. It's basically sawdust mixed with plastic, and what that lets me do is I can sand it and stain it. So actually all of my vents and a lot of other parts on the car are going to be made out of wood, which that should be classy. Vent design 1, vent design 2, vent design 3, vent design 4, vent design 5, and hopefully the last vent design. It does need a little cleaning up after it comes off the printer, so let's head to the garage, do some sanding, and well, let's hope it fits. The part isn't exactly clean and ready to go when it comes out of the printer, even if it's just regular plastic and not this wood material that I'm working with. There are some little stringy things that you need to clean off usually, and then also, since there's overhangs on this, there are some supports that were printed to support the overhangs as the piece is being made. So I'm going to remove those, I'm going to clean up some of the stringy stuff that we have, and then hopefully we'll sand it down, stain it, and see if it works. I would definitely consider that a success. I have some other parts for the car, like a shift handle and a grab bar that I've already printed out, and I have a few more vents that I need to print out, but once that's done, I'm gonna decide on a final stain color, pop everything back out, stain it, and then, well, we're done printing car parts. For now, unless I learn how to print a car. I found an eighth prototype vent, which is gonna wind up in the trash with all the other failures. Anyways, that's it for right now. If you want to see more of the bug work or any of our other awesome projects that we have going on, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, why go to AutoZone where you can just print your own parts? There we go. Scientifically speaking, there's no way this ends well. Thank you. Very glad. Safety first. Come on. Let's go. Oh yeah. You're faster than that. Who is that? Who is that? Come on. Murphy, come on. Come on. Oh, come here, baby girl. Come on. Oh, Murphy! Murphy! Why are you faster than me? Murphy!